Kashtira's overwhelming dominance is crazy. We also have Scareclaw, and you're not going to believe, but my favorite water deck of all time, the Kyrishan Turbo, made a guest appearance. Sworn deck box is still up for those of you. We've sold out of the Field Center bonus with it, and we have a few of the regular edition left for those of you that want to grab it. I'll leave the link down below so you guys can grab yours today. And personally, this is still one of my favorite projects that we've had to date. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. You refined gaming tournament two for cases of good stuff out here. Man, oh man. Let me tell you. Four Cash Tira in the top cut of this event. How in the world did this actually come to pass? Well, who would have guessed that, you know, in a, one of the best mid-range control decks stepped up to the arena out here and wanted to challenge the standardized meta. I, I actually think it's kind of wild. Um, we also had Rescue Ace, actually, I think, believe doing the best out of this event. Kind of cool to see. We also had Snake Eyes. Oh, don't have a list for that. We also have Voiceless Voice and Scareclaw, of all things. You have a pretty wide open, diverse format. It's what you like to see, right? Let's pass on over to Decklist. Hey, okay, so uh, you guys like Snake Eyes? Just kidding. You guys like Rescue Ace? You guys like Horus cards? You guys like these Infernoble piles as well? Um, I like the ideas that we can see with, you know, bridging these engines together and exploring these piles to try to challenge some of the more meta norm out here. And I think that this is a pretty good example of what you're actually kind of able to do out here. So very, very interesting to see. You know, with bonfires and, you know, the extension packages for this. Hi, Pobbler. How are you, buddy? Um, I am just kind of curious. How much more value did you want to have for this deck? You know, just the little combo lines, I believe. Interesting. Noble Arms Museum to get into the Durandal to get the search going. Mm -hmm. This is... Uh, I would say this is very interesting. This is how you start challenging what everybody thinks is normal. Oh boy, now we start our reign of all of the craziness that is this. Hello, Dimension Shifter. Hello, Ogre. You know, this deck, its entire purpose is to make sure that you can high roll your opponent straight out of the game. And I know, I know, I know. There are a lot of people out here that do like not playing this deck, but I don't have much of a choice here in this format. I see we're also playing the moon that chill out here. This is actually pretty good. Being able to get a negate slash burn um, can actually get you games swung in your favor. This can actually be pretty good. Um, and of course, huh, yes, this G Golem Crystal Heart shenanigans for the draw package for the Heat Soul. It's been very, very strong. The OCG was, or the TCG was on to something for getting the chance to play this package. I, I got hit by this a lot, and it's actually pretty gosh darn good. All right. You saw the you saw the shift there, right? Uh, this build uh, chose to go for the Ghost Bells over the Mourners, which is fine. It, it kind of comes down to your personal preference. How do I want to go about trying to, I guess, challenge the craziness that is the meta right now? Because you have so much that you've kind of got to deal with. And I, it, it just, it, it's a lot. <laughs> this format is not very kind to anybody out here. And of course, this build chose to play different dimension grounds as well. I've seen dimensional fissures and a lot of things like that with people trying to counter the meta. I think this is a pretty strong card to pressure your opponent so that you can at least get, you know, the maximum value that you want to see. And we have turtles! Yes, Gamma Steel and Friends to pressure your opponent. Once again, when you can draw a lot of cards off a of Heat Soul for free value, oh, we do it all the time. Uh, hey, Voiceless Voice. Now, the TCG build, for some reason, we've been going multiple Sarvis. Um, I don't, I guess they, we just like it. Also, to be fair, the value that Star of Us also has, kind of as a card, is also kind of stupid good. Um, finally, somebody's playing Double Dynamondo down here. Good. And 
The Odd Eyes Wing Dragon. You know, one tuner non clear wing monster to make this. I don't know. I've, I've, I've definitely have enjoyed the value that this card actually has been popping off with. A lot of people have kind of over or underestimated that very, very, very strong card. Um, and of course, your Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph. Beautiful, strong card for this deck. Uh, gotta love the Econs as well. Um, Econ, the ability to defense or take something, has started to come up a lot more, I feel like, at this point. So, good frickin' stuff. What else we got going on back here? <laughs> I was too quick to judge and say that we were done with the cash. Moonlit Show, another strong card to make sure that, nope, your opponent cannot. Uh, once again, we see these enemy controllers out here kind of doing their thing as well with today's standardized meta. And we have Summon Limits as well. Okay, you uh, you thought you were going to get the chance to see maybe something a little bit saucier out here. No, honestly, not really. It's a lot of the same standard stuff that we've seen over the last couple of formats that like you kind of have to roll the degeneracy meter for to try to slow down the game. And uh, Cash, doing a fantastic job at that. Also, I will say this build was not doing the Earth Golem generation advantage package. All right. Um, it just proves that you can kind of get away with not playing that stuff. So, okay, that's that's a pretty big W. I'll take that. What else we got back here? We have a Scareclaw list. No way. You know, I didn't think that we would see Scareclaw functioning, but people still don't know how to handle this guy right here. Try Heart steals games. Maybe not in the way that you, you necessarily expect, but this card does some pretty big damage to a lot of players, all right? And I think that's actually pretty annoying to have to kind of clean up the damage that this little strong card can do. Hi, Solemn Judgments. Ah, yes, a full setup board of full Scareclaw, full excitement, full gas, and then you can just play the most annoying little support lines. You can anti-spell too. This is why this game is so very fun right now. I can't wait. Also, hi, Ghost Bells. How are you? Um, this is going to be a very strong card, this format, next to Mourner. You kind of pick your poison for which anti-meta power wall you want to go with, and you got some pretty strong choices. All right. Ah, Minkanko. You know, Minkanko barely, barely, barely dodged. And it's it's so interesting. You have the double of this. We have the pot of extraves for full value. Um, you have the mini kaiju package in here as well. You do have a starlight road in here. Wow, this this takes me back. If only this deck actually had a stardust dragon in the extra deck to beam out. I, this would be the hottest thing since Slice Bread that you'd be able to do. I see we've also got the Threatening Roars in here as well to kind of pressure power your opponent out of the game, which is actually pretty interesting when you think about it out here. Um, outside of that, I, I, I like this. We also have Torrential Tributes in here as well. So full pressure on your opponent. Not too bad, honestly. I, um, I'm genuinely impressed with the ideas that this deck tried. Next up here, I see, what are we doing here? Why are there cash cards <laughs> with snake eyes in here? Like, what, what, what are we doing here, man? Like, are we just are we just at the point that we're gonna take advantage of all of the, the good stuff engines that we can just to see what we can do? Because that's what this feels like. This feels like, hey, snake eyes cards are broken. What if we include these with the best mid-range control options that are available? And what if we make it work? Well, that's what you're looking at here, all right? This actually functioned. And I'm I'm pretty impressed, actually. This is the, today I wanted to play cash, but I also wanted to play my Snake Eyes package because I did want to lend it to my friend. And then I, I ended up, you know, almost topping and doing well, but okay. Hi, Anti Spells. How are you, buddy? I'm so glad to see that these cards still showing up down here and doing their thing. All right, what else we got back here? Oh, huh, okay. I, uh, Orcist, okay, oh, This is a little bit saucy. So we're doing very standard plays, I guess. Um, very standard King Sarcophagus, very standard, yeah, I mean, like, this is, I, I decided to open up the time capsule out here and 
Try Vanilla Yu-Gi-Oh! Edition, and it looks like it worked out. Hey, good news. Vanilla Harp, good stuff. Still can actually do something out here. Huh? Huh? That's kind of cool. And then we have the Kairoshin control. Yes, that's right. Kairoshin with the aquarium stage. Water monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle with a non-water monster. That changes everything. <laughs> that is beautiful. Okay, well, you know what? Uh, maybe, maybe. If this card is sent from the field of the graveyard, you can target one aqua monster in your graveyard, special summon, summon it, and you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of your several aqua monsters. Yeah, this card's broken. We need to consider this. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Uh. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.